and then here we are starting. So hi everyone, uh, this is uh, the uh, October uh, community call, DSC community call. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, today we are lucky to have at last um, at last, we have Constantine joining us. Uh, he's been trying to present uh, this session for, I think, uh, many months now. Uh, we just uh, life didn't let him do it. So uh, there's a few things that happened, then he couldn't uh, make it, but at last he can. So we will uh, we will go back to his sessions in a minute. And then before that, we just want to give you a few news about uh, what happened in the community. And... Um, and then start straight away. So um, quick updates on the activity is Johan around. Johan, do you want to take that one on? You, you've done it, so I, I don't want to pretend that I, I knew anything what happened in the activities. You're muted, or we can't hear you? Yeah, sure. Uh, there you go. Yeah, uh, you mean in, uh, yeah. in the actual releases, you mean? Yes. Yes, so we actually uh, we got the community the contribution from to convert X web administration uh, to web administration DSS. So that repo has been have, we have been removed X from that. Uh, we also got the PowerShell team to actually give us the package uh, web administration DC. So thank you for that. Uh, so we could actually release it. It took a while, but uh, finally we got it. So it is released uh, a few weeks back as version four. So th that's the biggest news, I think. Yes, and yes, and then the rest yeah. is previews, like a few changes, like a few uh, pre-release that been re uh, that been released. So it's been pretty quiet on that front. But I just want to go back. Uh, maybe machine config is GA. So this is not news. I think we already had one, um, but uh, it's still it's GA. So I don't know. I think there was uh, during Ignite. Maybe Jody, you can tell us during Ignite, uh, were there any things talking about um, machine config? Yeah, any totally. Talk? So there was a breakout session this year that um, Arnav and Leor put together, which was great. Um, and it goes over specifically how to secure, monitor, and govern servers, um, both across like Azure VMs as well as multi-cloud and um, on-prem servers using Archenabled Server. Um, I will put the link to that in the chat here because there were some really great demos too. Um, we also had some presence in a few blogs, um, specifically one that was highlighting a new built-in policy that we just published um, to be able to set your secure communications protocol uh, across both your client and server. Um, so I'll post both the blogs as well as the session in the chat. Um, and yeah, so if anybody has any questions, feel free to ping me. Always happy to go through a demo or, or yeah. But it was it was a great presence. And even in certain sessions where we didn't have a presence, there were also a lot of DSC questions that came up too. So it seemed like an area of interest for a lot of folks. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, I've been told just now that there's some updates on the doc side. So maybe Mikey, you can take on this one. Yeah, uh, let me go ahead and share the new doc. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Uh, so I think Sean put it down in chat, but um, so just this week, uh, finally dropped a tutorial I've been working on for a while. So if you're familiar with the uh, um, V11 how to uh, write a class based resource, um, this is a all up re approach. Um, that kind of will walk you from uh, A through Z for writing uh, a class-based DSC resource. Um, this doesn't uh, address uh, machine config. Um, that'll be a separate tutorial because um, you might want to do those things uh, uh, a little bit differently. Um, but so this won't explain anything and everything there is to know about uh, DSC resources and class-based DSC resources. The focus of this is just how do I get to a functional DSC resource? How do I get to one that has some best practices baked into it that I can then adapt to my needs? Um, so at the end of the tutorial, you can uh, throw it away if you're not gonna use it or use it as a, a jumping point for um, a more specific and uh, useful to your workflow DSC resource. 
but it'll just kind of take you from uh, I have absolutely nothing through scaffolding a module and then authoring the DSC resource. Um, it doesn't go through uh, testing or documentation, just getting a functional DSC resource at this time. Um, and uh, if you check that out and you think it's pretty neat and you want to learn why the things that are happening in this one are happening, that documentation lives in um, this concept guide for class-based DSC resources. Um, I think we talked about this last time. I don't. I, I think it, this is right when we uh, first put it out. But this is a uh, extensive deep dive into uh, class-based DSC resources and how they're structured and how those things work, um, and uh, some best practices uh, for using them are kept down at the bottom. But so this walks through a lot of stuff. One thing that I want to call out. Uh, that we discovered while we were working on this that some people on the call might be familiar with, other people might not. Um, so let me see if I can grab the example here. Yeah, so this this section here around default property values is new from last month. Um, so in C Sharp, there are two different uh, types that a variable can be, right? You have reference types and uh, value types. Something that you need to keep in mind is that when a value type, uh, um, uh, if, if the property for the DSC resource is a value type, when the DSC resource is initialized during a run, it is set to its default value. For class-based DSC resources, that means you can't distinguish between the user specified the default value and the user didn't specify any value. Um, so that's a uh, implementation thing that you kind of need to, to keep track of and think about. Um, and we have some documentation around how to address that and some patterns and, and processes. But yeah, otherwise a pretty quiet month for DSC. Thank you. Now that's great. I'm perfect. Uh, let me carry on with, or maybe uh, Missy's on the call, I guess. Missy, do you want to talk about the CFP for Partial DevOps and Global Summit? Uh, otherwise, if you don't want to talk, I will do it. You muted. All right, I'll I'll do it. Um, so Missy is one of the uh, content committee. So I think it's Missy and Kevin Mark quit there this year. And um, oh, uh, yes, and you, as you can see, they have opened the call for speakers already, and it will. Am I on the right one? Yes. The event is on 24th of April, 2023. The C, uh, the call for speakers is open and you can see here, she put it on the chat as well. Okay, no, no worries, Missy. If you want to take it, feel free Sorry to just- Sorry about that. There you go. You can, you can present it for me. That's better. Okay, so um, the CFP is currently open. Uh, it will close on November 15th. We hope to have this scheduled by the end of the year. Um, the event is in April as usual, April 24th through 27th. Oh, it's on the screen. Um, in uh, hopefully sunny Bellevue, Washington. <laughs> uh, we, I haven't actually looked to see um, what topics have been um, added yet, but we would be happy to take DSC related um topics oops thank you yes and uh and the so your your uh, so the the partial devops summits as uh, golf for speakers finishes on the 15th of november and then partial conference europe also runs the call for speakers and um we and uh, so we're in prague next year uh, in republic czech and we close this call for speakers on the 15th of December. So you still have about a month for the uh, North America, so PowerShell uh, and DevOps Global Summit. And then you have after that another month for the PowerShell Conference Europe one. So make sure you have uh, sessions ready. And then probably we, we will talk um, more than last year, I would say, to make sure we don't pick the same sessions twice because we want to increase the number of the content that we have. So make sure you have your keyboard and then you start, um, you start you know, creating some topics and some sessions as Constantine is doing today. So um, I, let me just go check quickly if there's anything new I missed. 
So uh, yes, so I already mentioned like there's a few. So from last time I left, there's uh, changes to the DSC v2. If you were not there last uh, sessions, I really invite you to go and check uh, the last sessions recording. So if we go to dscommunity.org, if you go to community calls, and then you can see the other calls every time we just put the recordings there. Right, so we've got different one and maybe they're not in order because I didn't do that right last time, but there's a few sessions there and check the recordings every time. And with that, um, let me just go check if I missed anything. No. All right, I need to add the DevOps Summit one. And on that note, I will leave it to Constantine to take it away. Oh, thank you. If you can show your screen. Share my screen. Yeah. Can you? So let's see if everything works. Yes. Can you see that okay? Everything enough for the recording? No? It looks okay. Okay. So thank you. And uh, yeah, sorry again that we have to reschedule so many times. I had uh, some uh, yeah, med medical issues that I have to deal with. Um, let me introduce myself. Um, I am Konstantin. I'm a senior systems engineer based in Germany. I work at a MSP. I'm also an organizer of um, a German PowerShell user group. Uh, we had uh, basically we had Raymond uh, on uh, l just last week to talk about uh, to, to make an in-depth talk uh, with Sampler. Uh, it was very interesting, very cool. And my main focus is so my daily work is everything around automation. So PowerShell, I do many things with Azure DevOps, with uh, which we also see today. Um, my spare time, I also deal with GitHub Actions a bit, and um, yeah, Azure, Intune, and so on. Uh, everything that's uh, yeah that's new and that the customer is wants. Okay, so uh, quick agenda. Um, the talk is uh, around Azure Automation DSC and uh, also the VM DSC extension that we have in Azure. So the old way, not the uh, new way, um, like um, want to enable, for for example, uh, Azure Arc. Um, it's I think better to use the new machine configuration to to um, to configure this, but. Uh, Many customers also have um, old infrastructure in place or can't migrate to Arc or so. Uh, so um, I think I I'm not wrong in showing this this approach. So the agenda is um, we will look over the infrastructure that I create. Um, we go into a um, yeah a bit of an overview. Uh, where where can you find Azure Automation DSC? Um, what what interface are we having? And we are looking at the uh, onboarding process um, as well as uh, visual as well as in code. I deployed my infrastructure through Terraform, but you also can do it with uh, bicep or ARM templates. Uh, then uh, yeah, we will look at the uh, different mechanisms of how you can use the DSC extension. Uh, the DSC extension you can use it in what I call uh, the pull mode if you onboard it to. Azure Automation DSC, and you can also use it in push mode where you give it a zip file. Look at this, uh, at, at these two scenarios. Good, yeah, then let's start with the infrastructure. Uh, it's it's not uh, that big. I have uh, one domain controller um, and one, um, yeah, two server 22s. One is the domain controller through the, um, that I onboarded it to Azure Automation DSC and um, ran a config. Um, that created a do domain controller. And the second one is uh, the uh, machine where I applied a zip file with the DSC extension to create some kind of a sample folder. Um, all code that I show in this, in this uh, demo is uh, published later on the GitHub. I have uh, on my GitHub and my presentations folder. I'm having at the moment a separate branch. If I commit it to the master branch, I will around uh, tweeted later uh, so that you can look at this 
Um, I have three folders here, the DSC stuff where all the configurations are. Um, then I have uh, a pipelines folder where all the pipelines, all the automations and so on are, are, are there. And then I have my Terraform folder with all the um, stuff that I deployed. We will look at this depth a bit later. Uh, just to check uh, which configuration are we dealing with. So we are uh, creating a new AD. That's uh, the new AD forest. I created, uh, I, I named the, con the configuration. Uh, we need this modules here. And then, uh, yeah, we are installing a domain. Um, then we install the feature and then we install the PowerShell integration for the RSAT feature for the, for the Active Directory PowerShell. Then we in, in initialize this because in Azure, it's always uh, good to have databases on a separate yeah, on a separate disk, and I uh, take care of this. I'm giving it the C letter, and yeah, then I created a domain, and uh, yeah, that's it. And um, I have also a pipeline. Maybe we can look at the later if we if we have time on how to publish this to uh, Azure Automation DSC, and also preload the modules that you need for for this. So let's uh, let's start with um, where you can find Azure Automation DSC. So for this, you will need a, an Azure Automation account. Azure Automation account has many features. For example, update management. Um, you can have an inventory and change tracking for for your machines, or you can write normal run books, as Azure Automation is known for. And you find here the state configuration DSC stuff. Uh, here you have a, yeah, an, an overview which nodes are onboarded and uh, how they are doing. Then we have here our, our configurations. So you can here you can uh, add here conf you can add here configurations through the portal, or um, I would prefer to do it uh, via the pipeline. So I um, have added that to the to the code. And the configurations are the, P, the, the PS1 files that I that I just showed, and uh, in this service you can uh, then compile the stuff to have the MOF file. Um, so you go into a configuration, for example, here, and then you can click compile, and after this, there, MOF is um, the MOF is created and it's a compiled configuration. And these compiled configurations you can assign to the node. Um, you can um, do it through the portal to compile, but I also added to, to the pipeline that um, I pre-compiled the MOFs and just uploaded the MOFs. Uh, because then it's better to, to uh, deal with secrets and so on. And uh, you also have the gallery. So um, service has a gallery integration, um, looks for specific tags, and you can uh, for example, if you want to have a IS server config, you can click on it and import it. Then you can use it with your with your machines. Yeah. If we look inside of a node, so here we have a here we have an onboarded node that we uh, can take a look at, uh, at later. Um, if we click inside of this, we have some monitoring capabilities that um, normal onboard classical server I think doesn't have. Uh, so you see for example here the consistency checks that are going in and you also see I just set up this today. Um, you just see the initial so the initial um, steps is where the where the DSC ex, uh, where the DSC extension applies the configuration and you see here for example uh, that we are having um, that it, there's, a, there's Windows feature uh, is 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 being installed. Then um, we are having these resources, and before it reboots, this is not compliant. And after the reboot, uh, it's checking. Okay, I am I'm uh, fully compliant because um, I now know that I'm the main controller, and everything is compliant. And you can uh, also drill down inside of it, and uh, for example, you can. Uh, check then um, what is what is the resource name that is inside the config, and also you can uh, you can see here. Let's see for example here. 
Oh, where is it? But yeah, you can also see here um, what services it depends on. So the create domain dependency on the Windows feature and also uh, being the disk is there and you also need to read uh, before you do it. Um, so you have a bit of monitoring on uh, what is happening and what um, the ad dependencies are inside the configuration. Good, so let's go to the onboarding. So how can we onboard a node into Azure Automation DSC? Um, I will show first the visual way that we um, that is, uh, is easier for later to look at the code. So we go into add. Um, you then see all your machines. That's that's the that's the procedure for Azure VMs. Um, if it's um, I I'm later having the docs.microsoft.com article of um, onboarding on-premises nodes also. Um, you select the Azure machine, then it says, okay, I am not connected, let's connect then. And then you have your registration key stuff. So on the normal full server, you have to yeah, create this registration key procedure for yourself normally. And um, this service has it built in, so you can, um, can decide if you want the primary or the secondary key to uh, to be used if you onboard this thing. Then you can have your node configurations that you that you compiled. So for example, I can uh, select this. And then uh, you have your you have some parameters that you can configure for the local configuration manager. So this onboarding also configures the local configuration manager. So you can say, for example, okay, I want to apply only or I want to apply an autocorrect, reboot if needed. And the action after reboot is, for example, stop configuration. And if you click, if you then click OK, then a deployment uh, gets initiated. Um, and show the where is it? Yeah, there it is. If you go here to extensions, you then see here a Microsoft PowerShell DSC extension where the provisioning is hopefully succeeded. If you click inside here, you get the status message that the DSC configuration was applied successfully. So that's the that's the visual onboarding. Um, yeah, but I prefer it through code. So let's look at the code. Let's first look at where is it? Let's first look at the at the ARM template for this. So I have here the docs article of how the um, yeah, the structure of the ARM template for the DSC extension should be. So we need here the publisher and the version, and then we need this registration key that I um, sh sh showed you earlier in the in the visual stuff. And then we have to define some properties, and after this we can, can uh, fire it up. So let's look at the Terraform for this, this one here. Um, very quick. Um, I created a resource group. I then uh, created a public IP. So I use modules. So I um, don't use resources. I use modules in my example. Yeah. Then um, I created a NIC with an IP address. I created an availability set. Then I created the machine, standard B2MS, Azure user as a, as a username, 22, 2022 data center. 127 gigabytes of OS disks, added some text, added the data disk, attached the data disk, and here is the, the virtual machine extension. So we have a resource that's called, in Terraform, it's called Azure RM virtual machine extension. We give it a name. And we uh, depended on the add data disk attachment. So this resource should run after this. And then we will say, okay, this, um, Virtual machine extension should be, um, yeah, should be added to this virtual machine. It's Microsoft.PowerShell publisher. It's type DSC. It's this version. Uh, we we auto upgraded here, and then we have here this protected settings uh, block. So we just look at here. We have this protected settings block that we also having here, and. Yeah, in Terraform, there is something that is called data providers. So um, you can say, okay, I have a, I have a, 
uh, I have a resource that is already uh, created. It's, it doesn't matter if it's um, managed with Terraform or not. So you can uh, say, okay, I want to um, um, I want to have information about this resource. And uh, in this example, I want to have resource uh, information about my Azure automation account. And I want the primary key for this. So this is the this is one of the uh, one of the keys that you can use for onboarding. And then I need some properties for the registration key. Then I have the registration URL, which I also get from the uh, from the data provider. It's called the endpoint. And then I uh, then I give it a node configuration name, which we see earlier in the visual representation. Uh, then we give it the, con the configuration mode, the reboot if needed, the action after reboot, and, and so on. Give it some text, and then uh, let's see what it looks inside the pipeline. Uh, where it is here. So this looks. If you if you do a Terraform apply with this, um, it will wait till the DSC config is um, yeah, fully applied. Um, maybe you can run in some time issues if your DSC um, config is long, uh, but mine only lasted seven minutes and 30 seconds with the reboots and everything went fine. You then have this um, resource attached to your VM and thing is configured and onboarded. Yeah, let's look at the machine. I am RDP'd into it, and uh, let's see um, what's um, yeah what the extension does. So we first look at the DSC local uh, the get DSC local configuration manager. Uh, we see that we also have a certificate, also cool stuff. So um, if you have a if you have an on-premises um, server you have to set that up and take care of the handling and so on that's also included in the service directly so you don't have to take care about uh, don't have to take care around this and also um, uh, it quotes it doesn't matter to have uh, the passwords in clear text because the MOF is encrypted uh, we can uh, look at this now so we have here the certificate ID. You see here that we have the report managers. It's going to the Azure Automation DSC and also the resource module manager. So everything is everything is uh, fine. And we have here the configuration mode, which is applying auto correct and the reconfiguration and stuff. If we look at the certificate, so where can we find the certificate? The certificate is uh, here. If you look uh, under the local computer node, you can see here the Azure DSC extension some GUID at Microsoft.com. That's a certificate, a self-signed certificate, and the, um, it should normally auto renews. Like I like I wrote uh, like I read the documentation. It should normally auto renew, but uh, you can have a an issue where it does not auto renew. So you have to manually auto renew it to make the uh, to make the connection to work again. Uh, that, that, that's what I'm. Uh, that's what I'm facing, and that's what I'm reading. Good. Um, where you can see if the DSC configuration is applied successfully is if you go to the logs folder of the DSC extension. So you go to the Windows Azure logs plugins, and go, go to PowerShell DSC to the version, and here you have the DSC extension handler files zoom in a bit here and in here if you look a bit closely you can see the normal DSC uh, text that is going on if you uh, run a DSC config so you can see the whole output of it how how is it doing if there is a if there is an error also the extension tells you this if there is an error I had an error because my my uh, drive was not um, known at the time that I ran the config um, I can figure this out very good because it's it's very nervous about the, the the error messages that we are getting yeah so that's the thing for onboarding and running a DSC configuration with Azure automation DSC and also uh, you see in the portal 
Um, going back to the, the this one uh, and go to the node here, you can see that we have consistency checks. So this is the check if everything is compliant. So you can monitor every every uh, co consistency check also if everything is compliant, if there is anything out of sync or so, um, this thing will tell you. And uh, if you if you want, you can also read a JSON report, but to read that at least not in the portal then. Good, for the first part, are there any questions? Um, I, I go too fast or everything, every, everything fine? Sounds good. Okay. Keep going. Good. Then uh, I would show the next scenario is, oh, I would show, I, I have forgotten something. Uh, let's I not, I not leave you alone uh, with this. Let's, let's get the, let's get the MOF, um, the last applied MOF. Uh, if you go to in the configuration and you see there's the current .mof file and you see if you go in the inside of this one, you see it's encrypted. So um, you can quotes write your password inside of it because it's encrypted via the certificate. And that's why, for example, if you look in the code, how I compiled the configuration, I compiled the configuration with the SDSC allow plain text password and allow domain user to true. So, okay, good. Then let's go to the next scenario is when you use the DSC extension uh, as kind of a push configuration. So uh, you deploy the VM, you apply a DSC config, and then you forget about it. So then the users can change anything, uh, the extension, um, you can you can re-trigger it, but it's yeah, it's not the best experience. Um, so if you want some servers for having some kind of an initial configuration, and then you don't don't touch the server, but you are not get, you are not being aware of configuration drift, you can use this mechanism also. So what do we need for this? I have created a um, a Simple, so the simple CSC configuration that we can have, or this, um, it's the create file, uh, or in this example, we are creating a directory, which is test user three, for, for example. And here we are, uh, we are using a commandlet, which is called publish az vm dsc configuration. This configuration, uh, this, um, this commandlet uh, will create a zip file, which, um, all the necessary resources uh, that it needs to run the config. So we have to give it the resource group name, the configuration path. So the configuration path is the normal PS, PS1. And then if we have a data file, we give it the PSD1. Uh, then this module will also upload the zip file that is created okay, uh, to a uh, storage account name. Uh, to, uh, to, a, to, a, to a storage account in a specific container. If I use force, I can override it at uh, any time. Uh, so let's have a look at this uh, zip file. Um, so if I go here, I have downloaded it from the storage account um, and here we have it. Here we have the PS1 file, we have the PSD1 file and we also um, have all needed modules that we need to, uh, so that we are calling uh, out of this. In my example, I just use XPS state configuration. So have a complicated, uh, more complicated uh, scenario, you will have more modules and all the modules are inside this zip folder. So if you do the publish ACVMDSC con con configuration, you need to have all the modules on your machine where you run this commandlet. Um, if it's if it's not the case, it will uh, get you a get you an error that the module is not. And yeah, the process is like this: you um, uh, zip gets downloaded, gets extracted. Uh, the modules will get um, 
yeah, transfer to the C program files, Windows PowerShell modules folder, and then the config is running. So it's, um, yeah, it's, yeah, that easy. So if we look at this in, uh, an example, if we create a machine here with this, uh, we, we also have the same stuff, um, availability set, network interface, blah, and the um, machine also. And then we will write our um, DOC extension a bit different. Um, we don't need the stuff um, for, for, for onboarding to Azure Automation DSC. We just need a configuration ULSS token, so a shared access signature for accessing the zip file. It was um, not a good practice to put it publicly on the internet. So you just have a SAS token that expires sometime and then uh, uh, at some time it's gone. Um, we then have the WMF version latest. Um, it especially on older servers, if you have not the current PowerShell installed, it will install the PowerShell for you. I, what I've seen on my older systems. And then you have this configuration section where you define the, the UL of the zip file. My example, it's, uh, it's in this st storage account in the, the C um, container. And then just give short, zoom in here. Um, that's very important. You have to call the script here. So inside of the zip files, uh, or, or inside of the zip file, there is this config.ps1. So that uh, the extension knows how, uh, what PS1 file the uh, extension needs to run. And then also the function. And the function has to match with this configuration name. So the function it is in, uh, inside, uh, in, inside the ARM definition, uh, but you have to yeah, copy the configuration uh, name here inside of the function block, and then uh, the extension will do the rest, download the zip, and uh, apply the stuff. Yeah, how does this look in action? Uh, I have already RDP'd into the server, and uh, here we see, we have here the folder test user 3, so everything is fine. And I also have the lock here. So if you go to C Windows, uh, no, not, not, not C Windows, C Windows Azure, we have here the locks again, plugins folder, DSC, uh, da, da, da. and then we have here the DSC extension handler. I will also zoom in a bit. And here you see the file, create file stuff, and successfully and created folder. So that's the, to my two uh, yeah, methods to use the DSC extension in Azure with the, uh, if you use it in push mode, so you fire and forget, or you have it in full mode, where you also onboard it to Azure Automation DSC. That's what I've prepared for today. So if you have any questions, and thank you for your time. Perfect, thank you. If anyone has questions, feel free to put them on the chat, or you can just unmute yourself and then ask directly the question. No one? So I have a question. How is this still relevant with the announced deprecation? of Azure Automation state configuration. So when was it announced? Is the question. It's, I mean, it's not announced like on a date, but this is where we are going. They have a document for migrating to machine configuration. So I would not encourage a new user that never used Azure Automation DSC to use it. Yes. Okay. 
I would Azure, I would kind Azure of... automation service will be only for process automation. They are removing everything else from it. Yes. So that means they're removing the Azure Automation DSC. But, exactly. But they haven't set a date yet. Is That's that correct? true. So That's true. I'm just asking yeah. like uh, if someone never used this, I would never recommend today that they start using it today. So true. Uh, would, the, would you start a new project on this one? I don't know, Constantin, what's your opinion? I would say probably not if you can use uh, machine configuration. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's the, uh, also my opinion. So if uh, I'm going into a customer project and they're already have this, I would definitely um, say, okay, let's see if we can um, and move them to Azure Arc and uh, enable it, uh, enable machine configuration, because that's the that's the way to go, definitely. That's yes. also I my mean, opinion. They but, they uh, even removed they even removed the support for DSC extension for Arc enabled servers. Mm, yes, yes. So you I cannot use DSC extension anymore. Mm. With Arc enabled servers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. I think there was there was a, a, a time where they supported this. I think. Yes, uh, at the beginning, because, but they re, they remove it. Yes. I don't know, month or two ago, right? Yeah. Yes. The the session as well was planned for. Well, when, when was it? Three or four months ago that we started yeah. planning for this session, <laughs> which yeah, is also why, like. Post ignite and things like that means yeah. Is it is it relevant? I think it's relevant for people to understand what Azure Automation DSC is, and and it's clear that you need people need to understand that Azure Automation DSC is uh, only on WMF five, so PowerShell five point one, yes. yes, and exclusively, and that also means there's nothing, there's no change that's going to go into it. So the service is still supported so far. Uh, yes. The end of life has not been announced. But they've announced that they will eventually announce the end of life for this. And I think this is what Alexander is, uh, is saying. Um, would people start a new project with that? No. Um, if people have already already using it, yeah. and um, if people are already using it, or people maybe have not used, I've only used the graphical user interface, then it's good to see the different ways you can integrate with it. I think it's still important, interesting for people to do that because then it will be even easier later, even if it's a different service, but to integrate um, machine config, I always want to say guest config, but to integrate machine config and to transition from using Azure Automation DSC with machine config. And hopefully someone, and I don't want to say any names, but hopefully someone will present uh, maybe this. Okay, if you've been using Azure Automation DSC that you have presented today, and you're using something similar to that, maybe, one of the next sessions is how do you get from here? So basically, how do you get from your configuration MOF to create your own machine config package that you can use within um, machine config? And how do you use that with Azure Arc on these kind of things? So I think it's good for people already using it to see that. So then we can build up and say, this is what you had. This is the integration with ARM and Terraform that you had. So then we can move to the next time. Okay, how do you transition from this to machine config? Yeah, migration is, is much more important now, and uh, as, as sooner as we started, it's better. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. Yes, um, yes, a lot of the actually that's the kind of things as well that even if there's no presentations, um, this is the kind of place that DSC community calls to discuss those. OK, how can we transition? How can we change this? And then we can exchange ideas. I'm always happy to hear people, um, people thoughts about it. And Alexander, I know you're looking at uh, machine config these days. So if you have any insight or any things, you know, feel free as well to share with us. I'm still going through little quirks of it, to be honest. Yes, and I would say that also the reason where um, it's very easy to define, you know, the limitations of, you know, what you can and can't do with DS with a machine. Uh, sorry, with Azure Automation DSC, because that's one been around for a long time and it hasn't changed for how many years i don't know but like for many years it hasn't changed a bit so it's pretty easy to define and you know you know what you can do and can't do and i would say machine config is very new it's been ga only a few months now 
So um, now we we have the basics, but we don't have the community knowledge. I would say around machine configs. They are how, what are the best practices, as an example. Even if the service is there, the service works is GA. You know what are the what is the community coming up with? You know uh, the best practices, how to do, uh, how to transition, how to do a migration, and things like that. Not just that, but when you look at machine configuration and you look at uh, official docs, you will be pretty much confused, but you will see still three different names used for it. Yes, which is yes. which is always a problem, even for people that are kind of uh, uh, involved in all that and knowledgeable of what's happening. But I don't know how it really looks to someone who is new and looking yes. at that. Agreed. Because you can see even in a, in the same article, you can see two different terms. And they changed yes. very quickly names two times, really, right? They announced machine config at in June at PSConf. And it used to be Azure PowerShell machine config, and now it's Azure Automation, uh, uh, Azure Auto-Manage machine configuration, really. Yeah, it was guest. It was guest config, then manage manage um, uh, machine config, and now machine config auto manage. Which yeah, yeah. so so they they are changing it, and uh, that's always confusing thing. And uh, okay, yeah, under, other, other things. I mean, I ask in the chat, uh, Jude about Jody about uh, the changes when you use it with Azure VM and when you use it with ARC enabled servers, the experience is not the same. Uh, if you look behind the hood, then you will you will see the differences, really, right? So if you just apply configuration, you maybe will not care about it. But if you need to troubleshoot, then you will need to know the differences. You, you might ask yourself like why that PowerShell 7 that it's used is not the latest supported version. Yes. When do yes. they plan to move it to 7.2.6? And, you know, like there are a couple of, of questions that you will ask yourself when you start digging. Yes. What's happening there? Oh. And and you do the right thing. Asking Jody is probably your best bet at the moment. And I'm pointing right. Jody to... I think you're doing the right thing when you ask Jody those questions because Jody can answer them. And you know, for the naming, as you said, and you know, we discussed that um, offline. Yeah. Like there's there's documentations that haven't been updated, so make sure. And I'm talking to everyone. Make sure that you tell them, you know, whenever the documentation is not up to date. I mean, one one of the main things that I'm missing with this move from uh, Azure Automation state configuration to the machine configuration is. Where can I look in Azure portal and see what is actually applied to my machines and are they compliant or not? And all those nice graphical things that I have in Azure Automation, I don't get it now at the same level in Azure portal. So I needed to investigate to find out there is a resource called guest assignments that you can search for in Azure portal and it will give you um, some kind of a view on things that you have, but it's not the same and not as nice as in the Azure Automation. In Azure Automation, it's just kind of a much easier to find out what's happening with your configurations per machine. Here you have it like per configuration. So if you have like a three different things apply to your server, you will see your server three times. And that can be confusing, really, right? So uh, it would be easier if you can kind of group it and see if your machine is completely compliant or just one of the things is not. You know, like Agreed. there is a, kind of a, uh, yes. a room for improvement, let's put it yes. that way. And on the and the, some of the concepts and approaches, I would say, are different from DSC, as in from Azure Automation DSC, like the way it's reporting on the per node management type of things. Um, and then the, the, there are some improvements. So, so in the, how to say that, uh, you know, you have the reasons. And I think a lot of things is about the reasons, like the reasons should giving you back some information about what is not working. 
and you make you have to make sure that the uh, the resources that you use provide the reasons for non-compliance to give you a better idea of what's going on in your machines. So yeah, there's a lot of things that needs improvement and needs understanding and document documented as well. And maybe I'm missing, but that's the thing. You know, that's very new as well. So we need to poke the team to make sure that they, they do that. Uh, Johan, you have your hands raised. What do you want to say? Yeah, I just, I just wanted to say that uh, thank you, Constantine, for the presentation. I, I, I thought it was interesting. And uh, uh, and also like uh, seeing Terraform. Uh, it, uh, I haven't seen that before, so deploying DC. So that, that was cool. More of that. I can make a whole thank session you. on Terraform if you want. Yeah, we can do it. <laughs> well, you, you can do a session on Terraform and machine config because you know, basically the idea, I would say maybe not the idea, but one of the idea of uh, machine config was to extend, uh, you know, the ARM um, API to do more, you know, with the, with assigning the policies to the VMs and things like that. So uh, so maybe you can also do this, something similar, with, at least on the uh, Terraform part with integration with machine config, you know, how would you do that, which is part of the, what we discussed, like an interesting subject. How would you change from what you were showing in Terraform for Azure Automation DSC, how would you do that with machine config going forward? Yeah, I would definitely take a look and come back to you. Good, um, which is a good transition I, for me. Because I, because I all, uh, also need it for my, uh, need it for my role also because um, exactly we are getting more and more customers who are interested in Azure Stack HCI and Azure Arc and so on you have to have this at some point so yeah yes and and as Daniel says then someone can also cover bicep you know how to use bicep, bicep to do it and pulling me thank you for volunteering Daniel <laughs> <laughs> so, um, for the transition, everyone is welcome to present those things. And even if you don't have a full session, you just want to show, you know, how would you do this? I, I, I showed an example of, uh, you know, uh, how would you do Terraform with Mission Config? If that's the only thing you have and you believe you only have 10 minutes or 15 minutes on it, just submit it. And then we'll just make sure we get in touch. And then you can demo that and someone else can demo something else. Okay, so I've put the link for the DSC community uh, session now. So that's the call for speakers. Uh, the next is on the 30th of November. I haven't had I haven't had time to check, but I believe that's correct. It's in six weeks, pretty much. And we don't have anything planned for next time. So if you come up with anything you want to demo or you want to discuss, feel free to reach out to us uh, either via that link or over uh, the DSC community um, account on Twitter or any of us on the chat as usual. Is there any other question for Constantine or Alexander? Okay, so we can stop the recording. And thank you very much for coming and watching us. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Sweet, thanks. Bye.